Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Chef Katie from Qdova, and we're here with another Wednesday cooking tutorial. Today we're gonna show you how to do sheet pan nachos. This is a super easy, major crowd pleaser. So next week is Cinco de Mayo. Um, I'm excited, I hope you're excited. And we have all of these incredible ingredients that come in our family meals. And I think if you wanna turn our family meal into something special for Cinco de Mayo, this is an awesome way to do that. So our family meals come with a protein of your choice, either chicken or steak, rice and beans, and then all of our amazing toppings. Um, and I'm gonna show you today how to take most of those ingredients and turn them into perfect sheet pan nachos. Let's get started. Um, I have my oven preheated to about 400 degrees, 375. Um, the point is you're just trying to get it pretty hot. I like using my oven instead of my broiler. I think the broiler cooks really unevenly and then you're gonna get some really dark spots and some spots where the cheese doesn't melt. So I just wouldn't mess with the broiler. Um, I'm gonna show you how to top these. So one thing that you always wanna do is just line a sheet pan with foil. That means there's no cleanup later, which is my favorite kind of cooking. Um, I don't really do the dishes in my house, so it's probably your favorite kind of cooking. <laughs> All right, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is top it with our protein. I have chicken here, and then I have beans. So let's talk about the beans first. There's two ways you could do this. You can just use a slotted spoon, and you just wanna make sure you really drain your beans. The thing you really don't want is you don't wanna get your chips soggy. That is the absolute enemy of nachos, right? So this is one option. You just drain it really well with a slotted spoon and then just sort of drizzle your beans all over. Um, that's sort of my favorite way to do this. I like the texture of whole beans when you're eating your nachos. Plus, um, what I'm gonna show you in a minute is like a this double layer technique. So I like that if you're doing whole beans, they'll kind of fall through. The other option is to use our old fashioned potato masher to mash these up and sort of make a refry. Now, you don't even have to heat up your beans. If you're using leftovers from your family meal, you literally just need to mash them. Um, and then I would still use a slotted spoon just to make sure you're not getting uh, any too much liquid in here. But like I said, I like the whole beans, so that's, that's the route I'm gonna go, but you do you. Okay, so I have one layer that I've already started. It's chips. It's shredded cheese, and then it's got a little bit of beans. Now I'm gonna do the second layer. I think this is crucial. I think no one can say no to nachos. The more, the better. So then you're gonna do a second whole layer. You don't wanna go too high. It's really just like one even layer that you're looking for. We're almost there. I think the hardest part about this is gonna be getting your family meal and not eating all the chips. That has been my struggle all afternoon. In fact, I took some chips and I ding dong door, ding dong ditch, is that what you call it, my next door neighbors, because I knew if I had leftovers of this after filming this Instagram live, all I would do is eat them all night. Okay, so a layer of chips, and then I'm gonna do more cheese. Just sprinkle that on. You don't want huge amounts or it's gonna take forever to melt. Plus, we're gonna add more cheese later. After this comes out, we're gonna add more queso to this. So there will be no shortage of cheese on our nachos. Don't you worry. You're just sort of trying to get this evenly covered. That's really what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more beans. Again, you can mash these, you can do refried, whatever. Whatever suits your fancy. You can skip the beans if that's not your thing or if you ate them all last night with your family meal. I think what would be awesome is I would order a family meal and do like taco night for the family and use the proteins and have rice and beans on the side and the corn tortillas and make tacos and then make nachos for the family as an appetizer and really celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Okay, so my beans are on and then I'm just gonna do chicken. Now I don't wanna do a lot of this and most likely you're not gonna have a ton left over after you've uh, made your family meal, but that's up to you just like a little bit so you'll get some bites with some protein on them some with just the cheese that's all good okay so this is going to go into the oven really it's going to take about 10 minutes i mean no more than that we are just trying to get that cheese melted so while that's cooking i'm going to show you all about the toppings i think nachos are really about two things 
They are about the cheese and the chips, and then they're really just the toppings. They are a cheesy, crunchy vehicle for amazing toppings. So one of my favorites is pickled onions. So pickled red onions are the easiest thing to make. They are made with lime juice and salt and onions. That's it. Um, if you are trying to make this for Cinco de Mayo, I would start these on maybe Cinco de Mayo is Tuesday, so I'd start them on Sunday just so that you've got a good time to pickle. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna thinly slice your onions. Um, I rinse mine under hot water just because it really opens the cells and the pores on the onions so that the vinegar or lime juice or whatever acid you're gonna introduce can really penetrate and start pickling faster. Um, you don't even have to do that though. You could put it straight into a jar or a container and just add some acid. I like lime juice because I love the bright flavor that you get that's sort of sweet and acidic, but you could just use some vinegar, straight white vinegar, red wine vinegar. Um, red wine vinegar will help give it some really pretty pink color faster, and then salt, and that's all you have to do. Could not be easier, so delicious. If you do wanna make it spicy, you could add some habanero that you just slice and throw in with your pickling liquid. That's another trick. Um, okay, Qdoba's guacamole. I do not need to talk about that too much. Um, I'm gonna put on our pico de gallo and queso, of course, and some salsa verde. And then a couple things that are not on the menu. I've got just some whole cilantro leaves. Um, I love how they look and I love how they taste. And then I also just think that anytime you're eating anything that's heavy, anything that's like a creamy texture, creamy pasta, anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to cut it with something fresh, right? So this is just gonna give us something fresh with um, all of the cheesy goodness that's going in there, okay? I am gonna also show you how to cut some radish. So um, radish is very common in Mexico and it is so delicious. If you are not a radish fan, start working on it, it'll change your life. So there's two things you could do. You could just use a thin, a sharp knife and um, slice this really thinly by yourself or you can get one of these mandolins for so cheap you can get them online they will be delivered to your house and they just make everything so easy so I'm a huge fan of a mandolin but it's totally up to you if you don't want to have um, if you don't want to buy something if you have great knife skills go for it you know just use your knife um, so I'm going to just literally sprinkle this all over when they come out but I will show you one other trick. Um, I will show you how to julienne these. So if you want to do a julienne, which is like a really nice thin strip, um, then you're just gonna take a stack of them that came out of your mandolin, and you're just gonna cut them like this. Straight down in strips. And then you've got these sort of little matchsticks. And the thing that's really nice about radishes, on really all Mexican food, on tacos, on nachos, on anything, is that they're gonna do a few things. One, they're gonna add beautiful color. Um, the bright white and the pink are just stunning, especially food tends to turn kind of brown, right? When you caramelize beef, it turns brown. When you caramelize proteins, brown. Um, but this is gonna add just pops of white and pink, something that doesn't, that you don't see in a lot of other food. It's also gonna add a little bit of crunch and texture, and then it's also gonna add freshness, just like our cilantro is going to do. So. There's two different ways you can add radish. I feel like um, both of these are great for nachos. In terms of sheet pan nachos, I just love the look of kind of the whole, the whole radish, but that is totally up to you. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is some green chili. Jalapeno is going to give you a more mild heat, not completely mild, but more mild, or serrano. Serrano is gonna be a hotter green chili. Um, in our house, we like things a little spicy, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. Super simple. I, I do think you don't need great knife skills for this, but a sharp knife helps just because if you're doing really big pieces, like look at that. If you do a piece like that, that is a really big, very spicy bite for somebody. You're gonna to wanna to go a little bit thinner. So you're looking for probably an eighth of an inch if possible, um, just so you get these really thin rings. And then it's up to you what you're gonna to wanna to do with those seeds. If you like spice in your family, you keep those seeds and you sprinkle those all over your nachos. If your family is a little bit averse to some heat, then keep those seeds out. Those seeds have been sitting 
in the veins on the inside of the chili and the veins are actually where all the heat is. It's not the outside skin um, at Keto, but we use jalapenos for everything. It's in our pico, it's in our guac, but we remove those seeds and we remove those veins so that it's, you get the amazing green chili flavor from the jalapenos, but that you don't get a lot of the heat. Um, so it's really up to you. Do you want the heat or do you not want the heat? That's what the seeds are gonna do for you. So I'm just gonna chop a little bit more of these. And then I'm gonna pull some fresh cilantro leaves. And then that's pretty much it. We're gonna go check on our nachos, see how they're doing in the oven, and then get ready to dress these. Oh, I'm excited. All right, let's go see how they are. Oh my gosh, oh, they're perfect. And like I said, this was so quick. I mean, this is going to be the easiest appetizer that you could make for your family. This could also totally be dinner as well. Totally up to you. Okay, so keeping hot things with hot, I'm gonna drizzle our queso all over this. There's no wrong or right way to drizzle queso, by the way. <laughs> Thin clumps, big, huge chunks, no one's gonna be mad. You just wanna make sure you kind of get all over the place, right? Ooh, these just smell good. We have fresh lime that we put on our tortilla chips at Qdoba, and I can smell the fresh lime that is like coming off of this from heating it. Okay, so then some pico. I'm gonna use my hands. I just think that's the easier way to do this. Plus this is for my family, right? This is not for the restaurant. We're all friends here, right guys? Oh, and I did think of something I left in the fridge that I wanted to show you guys. I have a cool little trick. Okay, then we're gonna do just some like dollops of guacamole. So I think when you're doing something like guac or sour cream on nachos, just put it on here. We're gonna like, we're gonna be eating this right off of the sheet pan, right? So everybody can just dip into the chunks and piles of guac. That sounds like the way to go. Sort of same thing with the salsa. You're just gonna wanna make like stations sort of for people to grab their cheesy chip and to dip into. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, we're almost there everybody. Like I said, this is like just one of the easiest things that you could make, right? This is no TV magic. You are seeing me make the whole thing from start to finish. And this, <laughs> this would definitely be enough for uh, definitely six people, I would say, as an appetizer. Four people, if we're gonna eat this for dinner. All right, then I'm gonna put my jalapenos, or I'm sorry, my serranos on here, and just sprinkle those all over. And then I'm gonna do cilantro last, and I'm gonna show you one more thing. Look at how gorgeous those look. Okay, the last thing I do wanna add is some sour cream. Now, because Cinco de Mayo is a holiday, I'm gonna show you a little fancy trick. I'm gonna use a squeeze bottle, but if you don't have a squeeze bottle at home, you could totally do this by using a little Ziploc bag and then just cut the tip off, like just barely cut the tip off. Uh, that's what I would do. And sometimes if I'm going really fancy, like on Thanksgiving, I only have one squeeze bottle at home and I sometimes need more than one. So I definitely use a Ziploc trick at home all the time. So I'm just gonna do this really nice, big zigzags, just like we do at Qdoba of this sour cream so that you don't get one huge bite of sour cream, but you're gonna get really nice little pieces. And then the last thing I'm gonna get to put on are these fresh pieces of cilantro. This looks so good, oh my gosh. Oh, I wanted to tell you about next week, guys. On um, next Tuesday is Cinco de Mayo, obviously, I'm sure you know, but on Monday, we're gonna do another Instagram Live. We're gonna do a special Instagram Live on Monday with Votai Louie, who is a bartender and beverage director extraordinaire, and he's gonna teach you guys how to make a margarita while I make dinner. So please tune in on Monday, place your orders for your family meals so that you guys can uh, feed your family and have a celebration next week. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo. I'm gonna try not to burn my hand on this while I show you this finished sheet pan nachos. Check it out. Nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week. Stay safe.